Today, a price tag is attached to everything that Oprah Winfrey does or owns, which isn't surprising given that her net worth is nearing $3 billion. Who wouldn't want to trade places with her to live that sweet, sweet billionaire life when everyone knows who you are and all doors open magically before you? Truth is, Oprah Winfrey's origin story is probably way darker than you may have guessed. Believe us when we say that the one and only Oprah had to claw her way out of poverty and obscurity. Her spending habits are heavily affected by her painful past, and she is willing to give away as much as she can to make life easier for others. Don't forget to subscribe to Rumor Juice. And now, let's learn more about Oprah Winfrey's sacrifices that she made to build her multi-billion business empire and help others. I Googled myself the other day for the first time, and I was reading about- What did you say? I was like, I am so impressed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> the 66-year-old must be a living and breathing expert in making the right business investments. Everyone and their mom is dying to learn the secret behind the unimaginable success of America's richest self-made woman. So, here's a question for you. What would you do with your first $1 million check? Take your time and share your plans with us in the comments section below. Meanwhile, here's a highly relatable thing Oprah Winfrey did with the first million she made. That is a lot of money, the former talk show host said. And the first thing I did when I got my check for a million dollars was I took a picture of it. And then she splurged on some really good Ralph Lauren towels. Turns out, Oprah loves big and fluffy towels that you can wrap your whole body in. Who doesn't, Oprah? Who doesn't? Oprah Winfrey became a millionaire at the age of 32 thanks to her legendary eponymous talk show. By that time, she had already received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress, thanks to her performance in Steven Spielberg's drama, The Color Purple. The entire country knew who she was. On the other hand, by the age of 32, Oprah had learned everything about life's hardships and injustice. Today, she is friends with renowned designers and no doubt, her closet is chock full of costly customized items. Growing up, however, Oprah was so poor she had to wear dresses made of potato sacks. We're pretty sure that Oprah wasn't popular among her peers. Her grandmother's dream was to see her granddaughter hired to be someone's domestic worker. Winfrey recalls her grandmother's words, I just hope you get some good white folks when you grow up, treat you right, treat you nice. I remember I tell this story all the time about my grandmother uh, in a big iron wash pot washing outside saying, you better watch me do this because one day you're going to have to learn how to do this girl as she's putting the clothes on the line. And just a little voice inside me said, no, I'm not. As if this wasn't enough, Winfrey has revealed that she was molested starting from the age of nine when her mother went away for work. Some of the abusers were her relatives. Later in life, Oprah tried talking to family members about the abuse that she went through, but they didn't believe her. When she was 13, Oprah had had it and ran away from home. At 14, she became pregnant. Her son was born prematurely and died in infancy. Oprah then would bounce between two homes, that of her mother and that of the man whom she considers her father. That was, without a doubt, a key defining moment in my life because the, it changed um, the trajectory of my life. Despite the difficult family situation, the would-be billionaire and media mogul did well at school Thanks to being a diligent and talented student, Oprah was transferred to a more affluent school. Unfortunately, her dire financial situation transferred together with her. Oprah recalls how she was constantly reminded of her poverty because she used to take the bus to school with fellow African-Americans, some of whom were servants of her classmates' families. To be more like her well-off peers, she began to rebel and steal money from her mother. Luckily, she didn't let her bitterness ruin her life and focused her attention on her newly found vocation, working on radio and TV. Your real job in life is to figure out what it is you are called to do. And you use a job until you can figure out what the calling is, because a job is necessary to survive. Oprah's interest in reading, speaking, and performing on stage was evident even in her early childhood days. She was taught to read before the age of three, and would interview her corn cob doll and the crows on the fence of her family's property. She joined her high school's speech team and started winning oratory contests like it was nothing. When Oprah was in her senior year of high school, she drew the attention of the local radio station that hired her to read news. And thus, she started moving up the career ladder in media. 
Regrettably, the issue of sexual harassment was as ubiquitous then as it was now, and Oprah fell victim to it. To add insult to injury, she was fired after less than eight months of hosting her first talk show and demoted to lower profile positions. But her genius shined through. She turned a low-rated half-hour morning talk show, AM Chicago, into the most popular, highest-rated show. She became recognizable thanks to her emotional delivery and became influential enough to be moved to the daytime slot with her very own Oprah Winfrey show. The show revolutionized TV. For the first time, guests could talk to the very understanding host about everything and anything, from abuse to addiction, body issues, or difficulties of family life. I felt like this is what I'm supposed to do. All these years I'd been misplaced in news because I couldn't relate. Winfrey said on transferring from anchoring to interviewing. The moment I did that talk show, I felt like, oh, I can be myself. And that was the beginning of fulfilling the calling. By the age of 41, Oprah increased her net worth up to $340 million. Within the following five or so years, the number grew from $340 million to $800 million. You are responsible for your life. And if you're sitting around waiting, on somebody to save you, to fix you, to even help you. You are wasting your time. Here's how a typical summer weekend goes for queen of all media, Oprah Winfrey. She hops into her all-terrain vehicle, one of the two gifted to her by Ralph Lauren, the world-famous fashion king and her fellow billionaire. As she is getting around her $40 million, 163-acre property to check the various organic produce that she grows, she admires the divine mountain and ocean views of Maui. When she gets back to her cozy home, a healthy, fulfilling, and visually stunning dinner already awaits, prepared by her personal chef. And if she decides to check on her mansion in Antigua and Barbuda, all she has to do is board her private jet worth $42 million. Want to know the story behind the jet? Even as a widely popular individual, Oprah used to fly commercial, just like us mere mortals. But she dropped the habit after a particularly unpleasant encounter at an airport. A woman approached Oprah and asked her why she wasn't hugging people like she did on TV. She demanded a hug. The talk show host indulged, but the next thing she did was call her lawyer and declared she was getting a private plane. She did struggle a bit while trying to justify the necessity of owning such this luxury item, but then just went for it. The whole idea of, I think, having wealth is not letting wealth use you, but you use it. Oprah rightfully wears the title of the richest African-American of the 20th century. Consider this. The University of Illinois created a history course titled Oprah Winfrey, the Tycoon, which is a solid enough proof of the importance of Oprah's empire and her status as a historical figure. When you're wearing pantyhose all day, you can cut off a leg and then you save another leg. So you have a, 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 a drawer of one-legged hose. <laughs> So that when you put the one leg on and the other leg on, you have the matching legs. So I don't, I, that's, okay, I don't do that anymore because I'm rich. By 2008, Winfrey's annual income increased to $275 million. Her name is itself a brand. After 25 very successful years on air, the Oprah Winfrey show isn't producing new episodes anymore, but its spiritual successor is Oprah's own cable channel entitled, fittingly, OWN or the Oprah Winfrey Network. Winfrey owns about 25% of the channel, which is worth an estimated $75 million. She made the decision to end her Oprah Winfrey show nine years ago, but she remains as influential and hardworking as ever. At the age of 66, Oprah is worth 2.8 billion, according to Forbes. Oprah has launched O, the Oprah magazine, and delved into the wellness business. In 2015, she bought 8% of WW, known formally as Weight Watchers, for $43 million. According to CNN, the investment is now worth over $400 million. A great, mutually beneficial financial decision. Since Oprah became involved in the business, Weight Watchers have been reporting a boost in subscriber numbers. Winfrey owns a number of properties around the world. Remember the Maui estate? Collectively worth over $100 million. Her California home cost her $52 million, the Colorado home, $14 million, Washington State home, $8.3 million, and the Montecito horse farm estate, $29 million. As a person who had to overcome so many obstacles in life, Oprah knows how important it is to give back and support those close to you. 
I'm going to keep checking up on you to see if you're going to be straight A's in the second grade as well. C. Let's start the path of straight A's. You can do it. Big hug. <laughs> Big hug. She has famously taken her staff and employees together with their family members to cruises and vacations. That's over a thousand people. But Oprah is happy to spend millions of dollars if this means her helpers are happy. North America's first black multi-billionaire is one of the greatest philanthropists in American history. By 2012, she had donated close to $400 million to educational causes and given over 400 scholarships. Oprah raised over $11 million and donated $10 million to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Many new houses were built and made available to the affected families thanks to her efforts. Winfrey personally participated in establishing the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Academy for Girls in one of the South African provinces. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three! Yeah! The school opened in 2007 and serves as a home for up to 450 students. Some critics question the school's luxurious surroundings, asking if the $40 million invested by Oprah could have been spent to benefit a greater number of students. The media tycoon dismissed these accusations. If you are surrounded by beautiful things and wonderful teachers who inspire you, that beauty brings out the beauty in you. One of the best feelings in life, Oprah says, is being in charge of your life. To be a person who listens to their heart and not to everybody else's ideas about what they should do or who they should be. You get in life what you have the courage to ask for, Oprah Winfrey once said. The queen of all media was, of course, speaking from experience. Oprah Winfrey is the reason I, I love, love myself, myself so fiercely, fiercely and well. know that my voice matters. Oh, that makes me want to cry. And what's your favorite Oprah story or lesson? Do share in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs>